So Dragon Ball is considered one of the worst movies in cinematic history, both financially and critically. It was so bad that even screenwriter Ben Ramsey has come out and apologised seven years later for what he describes as dropping the Dragon Ball. But with superhero movies and reboots dominating the global box office, maybe it's time for our favourite Super Saiyan to make his way back onto the big screen. So pop a Sansu bean, because we're starting the healing process right now. Here are my five steps for making a great Dragon Ball movie reboot. Number one, get Goku right. As much as Dragon Ball Evolution was a total abomination, I won't spend this whole video breaking down every problem with the movie. You're better off checking out honest trailers or cinema sins for that. I can appreciate that making a movie, it isn't easy. You gotta deal with budgets, working with actors, someone or maybe 10 people need to brainstorm some sort of script, plus studio interference is a notorious thing. But to put it kindly, most fans didn't see Justin Chatwin as their Goku. Goku didn't go to school, he wasn't chasing after Chi Chi like some sort of lost puppy, and he definitely wasn't some angsty teenager dealing with emotions. When you really break it down, three most important aspects of Goku's character is that he loves to fight more than anything, even more than Chi Chi. He pushes himself past every limit with a never give up attitude, and he's an innocent carefree guy who's a little stupid. And that's the thing with Goku, even from Dragon Ball, his personality has basically stayed exactly the same. He's a confident kid who just loves to fight. Whoever's involved with getting this movie off the ground needs to get this right. Here's a bit of advice for anyone planning on writing the next Dragon Ball movie. Think of Goku as a fusion between Captain America's never back down attitude and sense of justice, and Thor's passion for battle, along with his awesome power. Speaking of Marvel... Number 2. Do it like Marvel. So let's just address the elephant in the room. Marvel are absolutely smashing it. Isn't it? Now I know, it's not as simple as just replicating their formula and expecting the same results, but it's hard to deny that they must be doing something right. What Marvel's managed to do is take beloved characters and present them in a fun and visually stunning way without being tied down by canon. Dragon Ball Z had 291 episodes, that's not including the original Dragon Ball series or the new Dragon Ball Super series, so to be able to squeeze in all the details from those series into one movie is going to be impossible. Having said that, Marvel's been around since 1939, that's 83 years worth of comic book history, yet they're able to nail each character spot on on the big screen. Marvel are experts at keeping their movies light in tone but high in action and intensity. This is something that a Dragon Ball movie desperately needs. Number 3, base it on Dragon Ball Z. Now, it's completely understandable why a production company would want to start off with an origin story. But by focusing on the rivalry between Piccolo and Goku in Dragon Ball Evolution, they basically tied their hands together. They weren't able to tell the stories that made these characters popular. In the first few episodes of Dragon Ball Z, the audience are given everything they need to understand that there's a bitter rivalry between Goku and Piccolo. Another classic anime that did the same thing was the Street Fighter 2 animated movie. At the beginning with Ryu and Sega, we got a full idea that these two hated each other, and they were pure badass. Any new Dragon Ball Z reboot movie would need to do the same thing. Here's my pitch for how I'd start the movie. So to begin with, I'd start with Vegeta and Nappa on some random planet, terrorising some innocent aliens. Think of Kylo Ren at the beginning of Star Wars The Force Awakens and how terrorising he was. Vegeta could easily do the same thing. After he's done with the village, he contacts Raditz, who's basically just arrived on Earth. We then cut to a scene at the World Fighting Tournament, where Goku and Piccolo are already going at it. Raditz just comes along and interrupts the fight, which leads to Goku and Piccolo teaming up against Raditz. And spoiler alert, Goku dies. By setting the scene at the World Fighting Tournament, you're introducing Goku in his element, the heat of battle, against his rival Piccolo. You also have a chance to introduce all the side characters, people like Bulma, his wife Chi Chi, his son Gohan, as well as friends like Tien, Yamcha. You can even have Master Roshi and Krillin sitting in Goku's corner. And as all of Goku's friends start talking about Dragon Balls and wishing him back to life, Vegeta hears this on Reddit's radio and he makes his way to Earth. See, that wasn't that hard. And we're one step close to hearing those iconic words. It's over 9,000! <laughs> Number 4. Let characters die. Now, one of the biggest challenges for any movie adaptation of Dragon Ball Z is how you deal with death. Now, with Dragon Ball Evolution, Goku had to deal with the death of his adoptive grandpa, Gohan, and that was a running storyline throughout the whole movie. That is not what I'm talking about. Marvel have often been criticised for not allowing any of the characters to die. This is one of the few examples of where you don't do it like Marvel. You cannot let this happen in a Dragon Ball Z movie. Death is often used as a plot device and a motivation for actually using the Dragon Balls in the first place. 
Goku's friends want to wish Goku back so that he can help him fight against impending doom. And Vegeta's only reason for coming to Earth because he wants to wish for immortality. Dragon Ball Z is notorious for having a lot of filler episodes. I'm looking at you, Freezer. Five minutes. That's how long you have. Liar, liar, liar. The story arc of the afterlife where Goku runs down Snake Way and trains with King Kai and then back again is pretty long and will probably be really boring on the big screen. An easy way of fixing this problem is to have Kami, the guardian of Earth, waiting for Goku on the other side of the afterlife, who will then explain the Dragon Balls, explain the afterlife, and direct him to Snake Way so he can head towards King Kai for some training. Now I would cut out all the middle stories while Goku's on Snake Way. Let's get him straight to King Kai, get him trained, get him back to Earth, fighting Vegeta. Because when it comes to fillers, ain't nobody got time for that. And number five, focus on the special effects. Movies are great. Some of them make you think, they make you learn something about yourself, and even question your place in the universe. Some are purely engineered to make your eyeballs water and your mind explode. And that's what a Dragon Ball Z movie should be about. Pure eye candy. Now don't get me wrong, I want to be invested in the characters, make us care about the fight and the struggle. But show me the most epic fight scene imaginable. I actually remember watching the Matrix Revolutions in the cinema thinking, that's some Dragon Ball Z stuff right there. And you know what? The movie wasn't even that good. So to do justice to the sheer scale of a Dragon Ball Z battle, you're going to need a big blockbuster budget. It's easy to understand why movie executives are going to be reluctant to invest in another Dragon Ball movie reboot. But what I would say to them is, have a look at the Transformer movies. It's a multi-billion dollar franchise, yet everyone agrees that they're pretty bad. In fact, they suck. The only explanation for their financial success is eye candy. You gotta give it to Michael Bay, he makes his movies look good. With the visual nature of Dragon Ball, you can take eye candy to another level. And you've got a massive global fan base that are just waiting for a decent Dragon Ball movie to be released. As long as it's done right. If I had it my way, I would get legendary pictures to produce the movie. They did movies like Pacific Rim, 300, they did Man of Steel, and with recent focus on the Asian market, I'm sure Dragon Ball is on Legendary's radar. Legendary have already started active production on the sequel to Pacific Rim, and they've greenlit a live-action Pokemon movie. Even Lionsgate are getting in on the action with the new reboot of the Power Rangers franchise. So, to be honest with you, we're living in a great time for a Dragon Ball reboot. Let's just hope that when they do it, they do it right. So there you have it. Did I miss anything out? Any ideas of who you want cast in the movie? Any suggestions for a director? Sound off in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, drop us a like. I really enjoyed making this video. It's the first one I've done for YouTube, not including the total abomination of a trailer breakdown I did first. If you do want to see that, and I don't know why you would, you can click here. I'm definitely going to try getting a video out once a week. I'm really sorry for the quality of the audio on this video, but I have ordered a professional mic, so the next video and all the rest of my videos are going to be much better. So to keep up to date, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And if you've made it this far, thanks a lot and take care.